Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of the Lit RPG Podcast, episode number 137 of the show. I'm Ramon Mejia, and I'm here to bring you the latest Lit RPG news, reviews, and of course author interviews. And of course, uh, this week I have eight new Lit RPG titles just for your folks at home. Uh, I just want to give you a quick heads up about um, this week is a little shorter than normal just because I'm recording a slightly bit earlier than I normally do. Um, I'm doing some editing on... Um, an upcoming book. Um, it's not Project Alpha. I know you guys are going to ask. It's not Project Alpha. It's not Avengers on Terror. It's something different. It's a space survivalish kind of story. Um, really looking forward to like presenting to you in a couple weeks, hopefully. Um, in addition to that, I just want to give you a quick heads up about uh, Amazon. Apparently, I, I personally just have a really hard time finding new RPG titles this week. Um, and it turns out that Amazon has changed their um, search engine again <laughs> on their site. So if, if, if you are finding you're not finding as many RPG titles, or just stuff that, that you thought you saw before that's not there anymore. That's the reason why um, several of the titles on the upcoming list on this podcast um, or titles that were shown last week don't show up anymore on Amazon. If you just search as for Little RPG, either in Kindle or in like all, if you do a search for just Little RPG, some of them weren't showing up. Um, so you might have to adjust your search parameters. I actually found better results with uh, um, searching for Lit RPG books specifically um, as a search term. So just a heads up. But again, I try to collect everything for you here on the podcast. So, you know, you don't have to do all that work. Um, but there you go. So oh, now on to uh, the titles I will be reviewing this week. Uh, that does include Kingdom of the Dead, an NPC's Bath, Path book number two. Uh, that's the second and apparently final book in that particular series, which is surprising for me. Um, also out is Grum, Suburban uh, Sunder, Savage Legends book number two. That's a very fun short story. Um, love, really enjoyed book one. In number three, it's going to be Death Water, a little bit adventure, The Wayfarer's book number two. That's the third book I'll be reviewing this week. Also, First Level, replay book one. Be reading that as well. As I will be Seasoned Adventurer. After that, it'll be Beastmaster Symbiosis. A harem lit RPG science fantasy adventure, Beastmasters book number one. Um, another one of those amazing long titles. Uh, and after that, it'll be Infinite Lives, Infinite Lives Online book number one. And last but not least, it'll be a New Life, a lit RPG adventure. So eight new titles uh, came out this week or end of last week that I'll be reviewing for you folks at home. But before we get into that, we're going to lit RPG news. <laughs> And in Little Bit of News, we're going to begin with, let's see, um, Matt Dineman, and he's the author of the Dominion of Blade series. He recently posted uh, a, a wonderfully cute plus plush version of Alice the Hippocorn from his Lit RPG series of the same name. It was made by the wonderful Annalise Ren uh, Rennie, who sent it to the author as a gift. Uh, personally, I just love the way it looked. Uh, it's it's like that like that takes a lot of time to like put something that <laughs> together like that. I'm not sure if she had it made or if she made it herself, where she like took a standing hippograph and painted it purple and added a unicorn horn and a saddle or something. But whatever the case was, uh, this looks super adorable, and and I, I'd personally love to buy more plushies, plush toys of my favorite Little Bitty characters. How about you? Uh, this is definitely one of the ones I would actually love to see a Rex from my own Avengers and Terror series. He's a very fun favorite character. Uh, maybe a Mary the Fairy uh, plushie as well for my own series. But definitely I would love to see like a Slime Ninja Chronicles one uh, where it's like the slime uh, core there. The author is making a video game out of it. Maybe who do some merchandising with plushies as well. So all kinds of fun stuff for any little... You know, that's me speculating. This point. It's me just fanning out. Uh, but that's that's that new particular new story. So fun stuff. Hopefully Matt Damon will, you know, commission some more plushies and maybe we can all buy them. Okay, in other Little RPG news, uh, audiobook narrator and owner of Samba Theater, Jeff Hayes, has reported several complaints um, and even bad reviews being given for both Life Reset 2 and The Wayward Bard. Apparently, there's been some issue where the audiobooks that people are downloading um, start somewhere in the middle instead of at Chapter 1, and apparently felt the... Um, people who've been downloading them have left complaints saying, oh, I'm only getting half of an audiobook. This is this is a 
you know, not, not a good audiobook thing. Um, and it turns out it's just a, it's a, it's an issue with the download itself. For some reason, it got messed up and only downloaded half the book. Um, so it's just, it's apparently a simple error to fix. If it's happened to you, um, just uninstall it, delete it, and redownload it. And apparently, that's actually the fix. Uh, it's, it's, it's that easy. Um, but, um, Jeff has uh, noted that there are actually people who have left like negative reviews for the actual audiobooks for something that again that's not within their realm of control. They up they fully uploaded the entire audiobook. Like there are other reviews that can show that, but you know this is just a, a technical issue. Don't don't leave bad reviews for something outside of the realm of control of the you know actual creative people. Okay, uh, and in our last bit of Little Bridge News, Gabriel Rothwood, author of several Little Bridge series, has decided to write, actually, not just write, but narrate his own audiobook uh, for his novel, I Am Gamer, which has actually been doing really well. I think it's the most, the most popular series that he's written uh, to date. These are his words, as he described his decision to do so. Decided to do it myself. I'm going to go... I'm going to release two chapters, maybe three a day on my on my Podbean site. Then when I'm all done, I'll take it down and submit it to ACX. Let me know if it's any good, lol, or if it sucks. Uh, so we'll have a link in the show notes for the actual link to, to listen to him narrate his own story. Um, and again, it's, it's not a professional audiobook studio. Uh, he's using equipment that's not um, high-end. Uh, and, and some of the stuff you can tell, but again, it's free. Go check it out. It's a really nice novel that I, I personally enjoyed. Um, and you can listen to him narrate his own stuff, which adds a whole nother level of like listening to, to Gabriel, um, you know, read his own story. So fun stuff. Okay. Um, that's it for news on to out now. These are some stories that about now, um, haven't had a chance to read them, but they've, they've come out. So I want to make sure I let you know about them. Um, including, oh, this is just a little bit of a PSA. If you see this particular title called Reborn Online, Dark Souls Book 1, A Little Bit Adventure, it's actually the same novel that was previously published under a different uh, title and a different author name as a Erd Online, written by Chris Savage. For some reason, the author decided to republish it. And the author is really upfront about it in the novel description. Actually says at the very bottom of that description, oh, previously published as Erd Online. Um, but it's something that you need to click, oh, read more. So you might have missed it. So this is just a heads up that that is the case. Um, I'm not sure why the author decided to republish it under a completely different author name. But they did, and again, they're the front, so it's not gets a negative review. Just if you've read that one book, you've read this one, so heads up. Okay, um, some stuff that actually has come out now, and it's new. It's including A Mage Rising, The Chronicles of Hearst, book number two, A Lovely Saga. Um, also out is Rank Zero, a sci fi Little Bridge Cyberlinks book number one, as is Ruins of Rimnir, The Alchemist, a Little Bridge series. Oh, so it is Changing World, the beginning. Uh, this one is actually a uh, Russian translation, um, and there are already um, review notes and, 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 and comments that there are some issues with the translation of this. Apparently, the dialogue doesn't use quotations and instead uses dashes. So it'll say dash. This is a great day outside, dash, he said. Um, and that might really bother some people. The author said that he will um, make the changes eventually, but not now. I'm not sure what that is. Obviously, he's not doing his own translation work. Um, but And this story definitely has some translation issues. So just a heads up uh, going into that particular novel if you choose to read it. Um, also out now is Glitch, book number four, the fourth book in that series. Uh, and the second book in the Cloud Dungeon series is out called Winter Wonderland. That one's a little more um, young adult, almost child-oriented. Uh, it's a very light um, story. It's, it's on the clown. So you get it? Light story? Okay. Um, sorry. Also out now is the fourth book in the NS Online series, NS Online Oblivion's Peril. Uh, so if you enjoyed books one through three, book number four is out for you to pick up now. So there you go. Um, there are no new Little Video audiobooks as of this recording. They may come out later and I just miss them. But I'll pick them up on the next podcast. But as of today, this moment, um, no new Little Video audiobooks. Little RPG audiobooks, I should say. So there you go. In upcoming Little RPG, um, again, this is where I read off a bunch of stuff that's coming out in the near future. You feel, to skip, feel free to skip it if you want to. Um, but again, this is probably the most accurate list at this moment of stuff that's coming up just because Amazon is wonky on the search results for what you may be looking for. Um, and 
this this is apparently just has the thing because I've made it the effort to do so. Um, including Random, Chaos of Lincoln Heart, Breaker Door Break Number 6, out on October the 14th. Out on October the 15th, Rift Worlds Online, Book Number 1, Space Opera Insertion. On October the 16th, the novel Mechs and Violence, Infinite Live Online, Book Number 2, will be out which is the sequel to the novel that I am reviewing today, uh, the the first book that I'm reviewing on this particular novel. Uh, Also out would be, on October the 16th, The Blades of the Borderlands, which would be Pharaoh book number 11. Getting all the way up to 11 there, so go Pharaoh. Uh, On October the 16th, 2018, this was actually a new list, uh, Viridian Gate Online Side Quest, the Lit RPG Anthology, which is a collection of short stories um, by the main author of that series, James A. Hunter, but also from other other novelists and other writers and sometimes amateurs, including our very own Raymond Johnson, who is the um, host of the Lit RPG audiobook podcast. So I just want to give him a nice, uh, you know, congratulations. And I definitely want to pick up this novel. I hope you do too. Um, you help support, um, you know, a guy who does who reviews your Lit RPG audiobooks for you and tells you what he thinks. A uh, very fun show, by the way. Uh, but our very own Ray Johnson, is his. he submitted and got accepted a, a short story for that particular anthology. So there you go. Um, also out on October the 19th, it'll be Siphon, A Touch of Power, book number one. That's one of the ones that actually disappeared from the Lit RPG listings in Amazon. So, you know, it's here. You can also look it up under other search parameters. Um, on October the 19th, Respawn, Lovers Lost, Respawn Lit RPG Series book number two will be out. Uh, on October the 25th, Air Today, Pawn Tomorrow, is going to be out. October the 26th, it'll be Beginnings, Peaks of Power book number one. On October the 31st, it'll be Base Status. On November the 1st, Never Fall, Mark of the Hero. On November the 2nd, it'll be Dungeon Desolation, The Divide and Dungeon book number four. On November the 8th, 8th it'll be the Parallel, a sci-fi liturgy. On November the 18th, Guardians of the Round Table, Singed Feathers. October, sorry, November the 19th, it'll be the second book in the Marleonis series, The Song of Shadow. November the 20th, Island Kingdom's War, which is Evolution Online, book number three. December the 10th, it'll be Hero, level up book number two. And December the 16th, it'll be Free Haven Online, Winter Dungeon Line, which is the third book in that series. And that's it, folks. On to new releases and reviews. And in new releases and reviews, we are going to begin with our first review of Kingdom of the Dead and NPCs Path, book number two, written by Pavel Kornev. So there we go. It is 523 pages. It is $5.99. It is not available on Kindle Unlimited. And here is the author's description. What could be worse than getting stuck in a virtual world? Instead of enjoying the game, I found myself trapped inside of my character's dead body. Now, the only way I can survive, or only way I can save myself, is by procuring the Scroll of Rebirth. The problem is, my chances of getting it are slim. I'm an undead, an outlaw with no friends, only fickle allies and plenty of enemies, who are only waiting for their chance to strike. My undead hangman character has to tread razors a razor's edge with only the support of his fellow players, preventing his imminent plunge into the abyss. But are they who they claim they are? In a game, there's nothing easier than assuming another person's identity. So there you go. Uh, full disclosure, I received an advanced copy for review. I purchased a copy when it became available. Uh, and apparently this is it. This is it for this particular series. Uh, the translator, the English publishers, mentioned that this is basically the end of the series. Uh, that's Magic Jump Books. Uh, they're... Though there's apparently a small short story that details like the afterward what happens after this, um, but they're not sure they're actually going to end up translating it. So, um, but heck, this is a, a good novel to kind of end things. A lot, a lot of resolutions occurring with the story for for the series of book one. And um, I'm like, but I was definitely surprised that this is like a two book series. Like, I mean, semi surprised. Um, I'll admit that this story is not perfect. Um, there are some people who don't enjoy this novel these they things say oh the game mechanics don't matter the stats don't matter everything kind of regresses and there's some plot holes in it. i'm like yep a lot of that's kind of true <laughs> and but it's still fun um there are places where this story is definitely forced into certain outcomes like i was reading i was just like oh that's that's an interesting choice and, and it to a degree it's to kind of resolve some of the plot lines that were um started out in book one um and and i'm like okay i kind of get that 
but again, some, some point, but there was never anything in the story where it, it felt so forced that it ruined the story for me. I was more along. I was like, Oh, that's, that's an interesting left turn. Um, let's see where this goes. But it was always like still fun. Um, and there were definitely the villains in the story are probably my less least favorite part of the story. Like the villains in this particular second novel, they're, they're two major ones. Um, and they feel like kind of copies of each other, which is really weird. Uh, like the villain from book one returns and he has a different, he's still pursuing the main character, although it's, it's really not apparent why anymore. Um, and, 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 and again, it's, it's kind of a flaw in the story and the end resolves a lot, some of the big plot points in the story, but it leaves some, some things loose still, because I'm not sure if the author really intended for this to be the last story or if just like, Oh, I'm, I'm going to get to one and decided not to at the end. Um, but despite those issues, I, I still had a good time and I, and it, it, it's just kind of a fun novel if you can get into it, obviously. Um, I had a good story with it. There's good action. There's interesting RPG power developments. The main character, um, this is always like a very interesting premise in that the main character is trapped in an NPC body, but, um, through some quirk of, of, of mechanics, he's stuck in the game and he has to try to like live as essentially, um, a, it starts off as like one of the undead and he, he span in different classes and he gets a class eventually. And, and he kind of has this weird state between being an NPC and being a player in the game. And it's, 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 it's a very interesting concept. And here in this particular second novel, he, that, that is explored as he progresses through his character. He, his, I want to say NPC designation kind of changes his NPC class changes, I should say. Um, and it was very interesting to me. And so it was interesting RPG power developments, some good twists twist in the story. And again, there's actual progress towards like an actual resolution for the series. Um, and again, the pace is relatively fast and, and there's a good bit of action, but it's never like repetitive. It's never like the main characters fighting the same way, the same kind of characters, same monsters or anything. Um, so for me, it was, it was entertaining. Is, is it the most entertaining thing I've ever read? No, it's not. Uh, but it was still fun despite some of the flaws in the story for me like this series has been these this two book series i'm not sure you call it a series it's just like a, a set but either way it's it, it was fun for me and that's kind of the bigger thing that i always look for in a story is it fun and entertaining if so you probably going to get something in a brain divisive unless like something really big ruins it um for me nothing really ruined the story even though i'm, I'm, I'm really acknowledging that there are flaws in the storytelling it was still enjoyable for me so for me it scores 7.1 out of 10 that's kingdom of the dead and npc's path book number two with a score 7.1 out of 10 so there we go okay i think it's the second week i did that by accident um so the second story is going to be grum suburban Sunderer, Savage Lands, Seven Legends, book number two, written by John Rickett. Uh, this is 84 pages, 99 cents. It is available on Kindle Unlimited. Here's the author's description. Two weeks after being transplanted to our world, Grum, a level 99 barbarian, finds himself banished to his boss Eli's suburban rental property with a laundry list of chores. And nothing to kill, except time. But when Grum meets a crafty little girl named Romy, he learns of a hidden kingdom nestled in the woods at the end of Juniper Street, a kingdom that Romy insists is ripe for the taking so long as Grum does exactly what she says. So there we go. Uh, warning, it contains 60% more barbarians, stat blockers, gamer jokes, drug use, sexual references, crude humor, idiocy, battle axes, magic items, and experience points. Uh, that's all from the novel description. Okay, um, Grum is without a doubt my favorite RPG Barbarian. Uh, I really enjoyed book number one in the series and I always promote it as like, oh, this is a very good example of a good short story, good humor. Um, minimalist RPG mechanics, but they still exist. But it's more about like, oh, him being like a reverse transported to a, 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 a game world, basically. A game character or a game entity is, is transported from his game world to our world, but he still perceives our world through his RPG world lens like he still gets quest notifications he still gets like level notifications he, he can see people's health bars and things like that so from his point of view everything is still very rpg-ish but you know it's still existing in our mundane world i've been in book one again he he had to master the art of being a barista which is very funny again also it's just a short story um in book number two he has to do with becoming a renter um and that was a very interesting decision um and 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 grum apparently just can't build himself a home from the bones of his enemies instead he's his boss eli lets him rent his old condo and with that comes again quest notifications for Grimm to find his place in our world. And I think that's one of the things I liked about this particular story in, in particular is that it's an adorable story about an outsider 
uh, Stranger from a Strange Time, basically, finding a place in our strange world. Um, there are, again, there are admittedly a minor adult themes uh, that are in, in the novel description warning. It says there is a single use of recreational drug use. There's a single scene of implied sex, and it's like very fade to black. And the two are related, oddly enough. Um, but even with those parts, this is a very cute, innocent, fun story, and it has some action in it. I think one of the complaints about book one is that, oh, there's he's a barbarian, but there's really no fighting. And this one, there is uh, a little bit of action. I'm not going to spoil it because, again, I think that's part of the, the charm of this picture story is like seeing it unfold and seeing where you know grum kind of you know does with his like these rpg view of the world and our mundane kind of boringish society it's a very interesting concept and i really enjoyed the first one i enjoyed this one as well this one gets a score of 7.5 out of 10 for me uh grum the suburban sunderer savage lands savage legends book number two uh, and this is the highest review score of the, of the week, actually. So everything else, not as enjoyable, uh, but we'll get into that. So we'll start with uh, our third review. Uh, it's going to be Dead Water, which is a little bit adventure, The Wayfarers, book number two, written by Red Kohler. Okay, uh, this is 65 pages, 99 cents, that is available on Kindle Unlimited. Here's the author description. Alex McLeod is broke again. A teenager from Earth, Alex discovered a mysterious old game called Wayfair, which transported him to the fantasy world of Borealis. There, he and the beautiful elven thief, Cerisa, embarked on a career of crime, stealing the gold that they need to buy new powers and skills under the world's Wayfair. But the money's run out. Their exploits have caught up with them, and their friend Belle is in mortal danger. Now Alex and Sarisa must slip Belt out of the city, up the river, and out to freedom of the open sea. But their enemy's power reaches further than they thought, and hanging over everything is the threat of the terrible prison known as Deadwater. So there we go. Okay, I read book one in the series last uh, couple weeks ago, I think. Um, and I, I kind of had, I had hope, I had such hope for this series. I thought it had such potential. Like the, the, the fundamental premise of the series, it, it starts out the 1980s. The main character is, lives in a very 80s world. His, his dad disappeared a while ago, but he had, you know, been on and off in his life. And he finds out like, his old stuff, including like this old, like gamer manual for like a, um, he, what he thinks is a D and D first edition ripoff. Uh, but then it turns out, oh, this was written before that. And, and as he reads it, he's transported into this fantasy, um, I want to say multiverse where he is now ruled by these RPG mechanics and he, he builds a character and he sets some stats, mechanics and things like that. But he has this opportunity to, to travel to this entire multiverse of sci-fi and fantasy realms. Uh, and it, there's a lot of potential in that. And it, But he decides to go to a fantasy world. He ends up going to a fantasy world, I should say. And that's where the rest of that story goes. And going into book two, I'd really hoped that he would have abandoned that fantasy world and kind of explored the multiverse or at least come back to the 1980 world. And, uh, and we would have seen how his um, RPG powers were expressed there and how like it made his life better or worse or whatever it was. But is disappointed in that the second book in the series, the second, I should say short story in the series um, is still existing in this fantasy world. And a lot of the RPG mechanics that were front loaded in book one aren't here in book two. Um, that being that they still exist. You still see like little, you know, roles for saves and damage notifications and things like that. And the characters, um, they don't really upgrade much of their, of their, uh, in the circle novel, but the, there was a li li limited amount of that. And so this story felt a little more on the fantasy side to me. And that's unfortunate because again, I, I thought this thing had a lot more of a promise of a very exciting and very interesting things to, because of the multi multiverse aspect and because of, you know, the 1980s world, which is really well written and really well set up. It's just that it's not utilized and it's just more like, Oh, this was his background. We're going to go explore this fantasy world. And that's what this turns out to be. And I was just kind of disappointed about what it ended up being. So I'm like, Oh, well, that was it. I lost interest fairly quickly uh, with the actual game. Jailbreak plot. It was like I said, not a boring story. So it's not badly written. It's just like, Oh, most of the things I liked about, the first entry into the series are kind of disappeared in, in the second one. So that, that is, I gave it two shots. Um, I liked book one, you know, there were issues of course, obviously, but book two, she's like, Oh, it lost me. So it gives a score of six out of 10. Again, not necessarily boring, not badly written in by any means, just didn't work for me. So there we go. Six out of 10. That's dead water. A little bit of adventure. The Wayfarers book number two with a score of six out of 10. Okay. Next review, uh, first level, replay book number one by John Gunningham. Okay, it is 89 pages, $1. It is available on Kindle Unlimited. Here's the author's description. It's his heaven or her hell. 
Waking up in a strange place with no memory of who you are or how you got there is bad enough, but when Lana finds out she's stuck with Peter, who seems overly excited by the prospect of an adventure, she starts to get a bad feeling. To make matters worse, Lana finds out she's dead, has no memories of the past, and all the talks of skills leveling up and questing make her want to scream. All Lana wants to do is find a way to get home wherever that is. But Peter is more than content to stay and see what happens in the strange world for the merchant gnomes, minotaur bartenders, and an angry house toughs have to offer. Okay, uh, there we go. That's the novel description. Um, but honestly, it's fairly accurate. Um, this is a transported to a RPG fantasy world um, where the two main characters eventually find themselves in like this um, starter zone starting where they so they pick their classes, they they choose you know so they get clothes and and they go into these uh, go through these series of tests and puzzles, um, and and that's half the story. Um, on the RPG side of this novel, things are relatively simplistic. Uh, the reader is shown a character sheets exactly twice in the story, um, once at the beginning and once at the very end. And I think the second one might be inaccurate. Um, I think the one of the characters might have leveled twice, but it's not shown in that character sheet. Um, all the other game aspects are described by the character. So there's very little shown to the reader about the RPG, RPG aspects. Um, there are no like down notifications. There's no like descriptions of like powers necessarily. It's all like seen through the eyes of the main characters. And sometimes they describe it, sometimes they don't. Um, so like they'll pick their classes and, and it, they pick their classes by going up to some statues and like, you know, tucking on their clothes and suddenly they're wearing those clothes and that's their class. And the characters describe to each other, oh, um, I see a notification saying that these are what my powers are and I instinctively know how to use them. And they see skill trees and maps, but they don't, again, that's not shown to the reader. It's just like the, the character's saying, oh, I see a map and this is where we are, or this is a, this is a skill and I guess I can use it this way. Um, and so it, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a choice on how to describe those game mechanics, but they do exist in the story. Uh, relatively, again, um, minimal game details. And again, sometimes in the story, it doesn't feel like they're fully impacting this really like, feels like there's a little one maybe and sometimes we're like oh you're ignoring these game mechanics a little bit so your characters don't necessarily die and that's again a story choice um story-wise again it's transported to rpg fantasy world the two main characters go into adventure solve puzzles get into fights learn about their new world and there are hints that there are bigger powers at play and, and some of the cultural views of these heroes um kind of hint that again heroes are rare and potentially troublesome but again relatively again this is a short story so this is kind of expected but there's very little world building um and filling in of these details as to what that means as a, that might be something the author intends to explore in books two and three or whatever the case is um one of the big things in the story that really stopped me from liking it is basically that one of the main characters was very annoying. Um, I just couldn't make myself like one of the characters. Her name is Lana. She's described in the, no in the novel description. The other character, perfectly fine. He's a little, you know, like, like I, I get that the character's supposed to be like very yin and yang and that one character is upbeat. He, he kind of understands game mechanics and, and game stuff. He's excited to be in this fantasy RPG world and she isn't. And she's like super downer and she's always whining and she's complaining and she's, you know, about everything. And anytime the other main character does something, she's trying to fall in fault with it. And she's all constantly accusing him of, of things and she's suspicious. Um, and, and that, that kind of attitude I had hoped by the end of the story, like it would shift a little bit and it kind of does, but for the most part, it's still very much of a whiny character. It's just hard for me to root for him. Like, can she just die so that we can have a, have a more, a, a less whiny story. Um, and what really kind of put me over the top was that, Oh, some of the decisions she makes are kind of out of character. Like she, again, yin and yin kind of personalities and that the, the guy main character is, he just pushes forward. He kind of goes with his instinct and she is supposed to be more of this logically oriented character. She's very suspicious. She, she questions everything. Um, but some of the choices she makes in the story don't, seem logical and that and that kind of conflicted with the way she was presented earlier it was a little bit of an inconsistent and i get that that it's set up that way so that she, she kind of has an opportunity to explore the world on her own a little bit um but the choices didn't feel consistent that kind of bothered me so overall again this isn't a bad slice of life story um i just didn't like it because mostly because of that main character so for me just didn't land and that's is what it is. Maybe it'll land better for you, but for me, it gets a score of six out of 10. Um, first level replay book number one with a score of six out of 10. There we go. Okay. Um, next one is, that is not the one I'm thinking of. So I, did I put them wrong? Did I skip one, two, three? Nope. There we go. Okay. 
Uh, next one is Seasoned Adventurer. It is by written by Brian Richards. It is 104 pages, $2.99. It is by Bunkin Limited. And here are the author's description. Alex's biggest worry in life was his job as a chef, cooking for people that otherwise wouldn't know he existed. That and getting a date with the server he had a crush on. But when he finds himself thrown into another world with, with elements, one with elements for two similar one with elements for two similar to video games he had played in the past. His only concern was survival. That's how it's written. I wasn't misreading it. Um, it may be coming out of his shelf for once. Backed by internet trivia and video game lore and armed with strange magical ability that allows him to harness the power of his foes by literally devouring part of their essence, Alex isn't the hero he dreamed he would be. But maybe he's the hero that can save his new friends in the village that could become his new home. And the author warns that this book contains some adult themes and profanity. Which it does. Okay. Um, again, another short story again. I, I chose short stories because I, I'm, I'm doing other things. Um, it's a limited amount of time this week. Okay. Um, a chef is transported to an RPG world. Um, he fights a monster, makes a friend, and has some adventures. There are the game mechanics, story, or technical RPG. Uh, the main character, Alex, has a stat page. Those stats increase as he adventures, and he gains some abilities as he finds. However, the RPG aspects is pretty superficial in the story. Um, and the most interesting aspect, his innate ability, Gourmand, which actually likes some game stats and skills and abilities from cooking and eating the flesh of his slain enemies. And it's a really interesting concept. And I really thought about, cool, that was kind of the thought part with the story that I was most excited about in this novel or in the short story or novella, whatever it is. Um, it's only used twice in the entire novella or whatever it is. And that was really disappointing for me because one of the things I love about um, RPG mechanics and RPG in general is that there's so much creativity you could have within this genre. Um, and I thought that this, this, the fact that this character essentially had to eat his enemies uh, and make meals out of them was a really interesting twist on like absorbing your, your character's powers. And he only gets supposed to give him like a chance of like absorbing his enemy's powers. Um, and it was for one, the mechanic always works for the main character, which, which from the description isn't supposed to happen. And additionally, it's only used twice. And that was the most interesting aspect of the story. And I was just disappointed that it didn't play a bigger part in the novel. Um, and again, a lot of the other, RPG aspects are just kind of superficial. Though they exist and they show up semi-regularly, but again, there's not a depth, a certain depth to it. And even though the main character has stats, um, they're really not reflective of what actually is shown in the novel by what the um, character does. Jumping again to in a second. Okay, um, story-wise, the action is decently written, but it's about everything else in the novel and the story feels very forced and inconsistent. The main character is initially presented as a shy, meek chef, um, but within hours of being transported to the game world, he seems to be transported into this confident warrior mage with enough charm and cunning to fool the locals into thinking he's a new lord. Only none of the game mechanics support this. And again, this is one of those things where it's like, oh, there are game mechanics here, but the actual actions of the main character and his success in those areas don't reflect that they matter. Um, the main character has terrible charisma stats. He has a terrible stat and agility scores. But again, he's presented as he, in his very first fight, he absolutely slaughters his enemies um, using weapons he's never shown to know how to use. Um, and he, you know, he, he doesn't even get scratched. He doesn't get hurt once in his very first fight in the fantasy world against like giant wolves that come after him. Right? And, and that's not a reflection of what those game stats did. Those RPGs, you know, character scores reflect. Um, in addition to that, again, the rest of it is just like, this is, you know, it just has the stuff here and it doesn't really matter, which is always very frustrating. Um, then just, uh, and there also just happens to be several women in the story that just want to make him a husband and, and they don't mind sharing among themselves. And so part of the story turns into this harem aspect with again, badly described sex scenes. So it's not even like the harem aspect is well done. Um, it's just, and, and again, it's super forced. Like the romance in the story is just like the instant, like it comes up, it contradicts the other attitudes, the other characters. Um, and it, and this is my own spoiler, but it, the NPCs in this world, the the characters, uh, the peasants, or the regular people, they mistake the main character for a noble. And so their behavior, even though it's not, not, not stated, their behavior reflects um, an outlook that nobles have a great deal of power in this world. They become very super deferential to the main character when they think he's noble because he's wearing nice clothes, I guess. Um, and then when he meets like some women, um, apparently that, that entire attitude 
shifts and it doesn't make sense because it's very inconsistent again with the way that the world is, is described up until then. They're very friendly, they start fleeing, they try to have sex with them. I mean, they try to, there's an instant romantic connection. I shouldn't say they have sex immediately. There's a very clear d- definition of like, oh, they don't have sex till after they're married. Um, and, and again, there's multiple women with the same kind of very interesting attitude. Um, and but again, that aspect isn't, isn't, isn't going to get no one. Again, within the realm of the main character's personality itself, it's again, very inconsistent. And that's kind of the frustrating thing about the story is that, uh, the person out of the main character flips back and forth between the unbeatable warrior who's, who, who's, who doesn't have any prerequisite pre- skills with weapons or armor or tactics, but still seems to do amazingly well, even though like the game mechanics don't, shouldn't support that kind of concept. And like this guy who's just self-pitying it and kind of a flop. Um, and it switched back and forth and it doesn't make sense. So there's no like reason for it to just like, at least be consistent with the attitude. Um, additionally, though there is some decently written action, it, it, it's kind of forced and there's no explanation of why this action take place. It's just like, Oh, here's an enemy. We're going to go kill it. And then here's another enemy and we're going to kill it as a group. And this kingdom is mine. And you know, foes are introduced. And again, part of that is, 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 is part of the format. Like this is a short story or a novella. And so there's a limited amount of time to do world building, but at the same time, the attitudes of the characters, the, 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 the game mechanics themselves are very inconsistent. That's probably the thing that bugged me the most overall, again, overall, uh, the way I like that gourmand aspect of like, Oh, he has the power to devour his enemies or parts of them, make meals out of them, which kind of, again, tied into his, his werewolf chef ability. And he could gain like their powers or their spells or their skills or abilities, whatever the case was, that was a cool aspect. And I liked it, but it's barely used in this novel. And that was just super disappointing. In addition to the inconsistency of the story, I just didn't like this at all. And the harem aspect isn't that well. So like there really wasn't much for me to enjoy. Um, it gets a score of four out of 10. That's right. <laughs> I actively did not like this. Um, gets a score of four to 10 and that's season adventurer, uh, with a score of four out of 10. There you go. Okay, on to Beastmaster Symbiosis, um, a harem lit RPG science fantasy adventure, Beastmasters book number one, written by Corey Shen. Okay, um, this one is 204 pages, $2.99, and it is available on Kindle Limited. Here is the author's description. An alien cat turned me into a super weapon. I was homeless on the streets of Third York when it happened. Then the military arrived and gave me a choice enlist or die. The next thing I knew, I was fighting giant robots at the Xeno Force Academy's boot camp. Figuring out superpowers and energy levels was hard enough, but I had to deal with a mind-reading alien princess, a team of gorgeous women, and a femme fatale in charge of the whole operation. Oh, and a galactic conspiracy is threatening all of humanity. It's up to me and my new feline friend to set things right. A civil war is brewing on the homeward of our ill allies from space, and hidden traitors are sabotaging Earth's defenses. We'll have to gain the trust of my hot teammates, and did I mention how tight their bodysuits are? Uh, and then there's a warning from the author. A warning may not be suitable for audiences. The book contains sensual and comedic adult scenes with a questionable taste, anime-style harem situations, and a game-lit slash lit RPG mechanics. Okay. Um, I was asked to read the novel by the author. Um, they sent me an email. I'm um, saying that they, you know, wrote a novel. This is their first literary novel. Um, and it has light of feature mechanics and a anime style esque harem situation. So I gave it a read. Um, the main character um, bonds with an alien cat creature and, and is pulled into this galactic conflict in the story. Uh, he merges with the creature, giving him access to powers with an energy cost. The main character. Uh, fights with the Beastmasters and other characters and other enemies in the story, um, whether he's training or like real, real fights. Um, and the bond with his alien cat evolves uh, and it unlocks new abilities and a in, in, in larger energy pool uh, that may that get larger. So those are actually all the RPG mechanics in this entire story. Um, and again, technically it qualifies as a little RPG. And it's mostly because it's not just that there's a progression system, but it's also that it's consistently used and it's openly acknowledged by both the, you know, the universe and the characters in the story. Um, so it technically qualifies as lit RPG. Like essentially, um, as the, as the main character fights with his, with his alien cat, um, symbiote, um, his, he has a set of powers that he, that he has at first. And then as he fights, essentially he gets, uh, <laughs> their bond evolves and he gets a choice, like two or three powers, each evolution 
to to choose from um and essentially you could say evolutions and change them with like levels if you want to and that probably more familiar with people but the author very um in their email to me said they they wanted to try to write something uh a reason that was just different and this definitely is different and it's super light and it's very very light and it's probably as light as you're gonna get in still with liturgy um but it is consistently used to the story and it's also referred to outside of like the notifications and, the, and like the the power descriptions um and it's very it's a very integral part of the story um but again it's not very in depth um it again boils down to like the main character choosing powers and you know fighting other people with powers um and that's kind of it there are other aspects of the story that you could tell were more important to the author because they're fleshed out more they're 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 more interesting they're they're more in depth um other aspects like combat the sci-fi concepts the academy training the the thriller element towards the end and end, end of the story those are all very well Actually, well, they're they're decently written, um, but you could tell that there's a lot more timing and, and conceptualization put into those. When you compare that to the RPG mechanics story, even though they, I guess technically they exist, like the RPG mechanics are essentially here. The rest of the story, like the the, the thrill elements, the the combat is definitely there's a lot more time and effort put into those descriptions and thought processes, and that's that's just the way it is. Um, the comet again is probably the biggest focus of the story and there, there are fights happening every couple pages sometimes in the novel and the fights aren't necessarily badly written. They're, they're like okay to good written, uh, depending on the fight team. Um, but there's again, a lot of like thought put into them. Um, there are fights between Beastmasters, fight against machines, fights against bad guys, lots and lots of fights. Um, and again, you can tell again, a lot of efforts put into there, even ever put into creating backstory for both the alien races and their relationship with humanity and what this whole big galactic war is. Um, and that, that all exists there. And I actually liked knowing that about the story. It's just, that I wish that there was as much effort put into the depth of the game mechanics, then this would have been a more interesting read for me. But for me, um, it just, it didn't work in that respect. I, I, um, additionally, the, oh, the harem aspect. Um, the author is very admitted to be point to like write to me and say, oh, this is an anime style harem story. Um, so it's, if you're looking at this story saying, oh, this is going to be like have sex scenes with like multiple sex partners. Um, and he's going to have like a, uh, the main character sounds like a bunch of women around who has, he has sex with or relations with. That's not what this is. It really is. And again, the author is very clear in saying, oh, this is more like an anime style harem story. Um, but even that respect, it doesn't really fit what I think of personally as an anime style harem story. When you think about an anime style harem story, I, I think more of the, the one I automatically comes to mind is the anime series Tenshi Muyo, uh, Tenshi Muyo. And it's the story of a main character and he's surrounded by like four or five women. Um, and they all have a romantic interest in him and they're going to adventures. They have a bunch of like comedic responses and funny adventures and stuff. That's, that's all that all exists. But the main concept of the harem is, Oh, he has multiple women interested in, in a romantic relationship or romantic, romantic aspect rather. There's no sex in those anime stories. That's a different kind of anime. Um, and there's no like actual hardcore sex here either. Um, and but the thing that is missing from the story, in my opinion, again, and this is completely me, is that it's also missing that romantic aspect. Like the main character comes in this academy. He has these new powers, and he's the new kid in, in, in the area. There are very few apparently male bonded people with with these uh, symbiotes. Uh, it's him, like a one and a couple other dudes, and everyone else is female. And so there's 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 a certain level of flirtation. Um, but the other female characters in the story don't seem to have romantic interest in them. They, at most, they're comrades uh, or friends, and that's kind of it. Even though if he has a romantic interest, and in, he, there are several places where like there's very comedically he has he has sexually aroused and he has boners and he has these uncomfortable feelings about like being attracted to all these women, but nothing's ever done with that um, really. Uh, and so that harem aspect doesn't even as like an anime aspect of it doesn't really exist in this way, which is again, I'm like, Oh, that's, I, I get that the author is trying something new. It just didn't work out for me either, or it didn't work out in my opinion. Um, overall, again, while there's some interesting, well developed aspects of the story and some decent to good combat, just as a little RPG, which is what the podcast reviews, uh, as a lit RPG story, it just didn't work. Like the RPG aspects, which is the part that I'm generally most interested in, aren't very well developed and they're they're very kind of superficial and they again even though they're consistent um and they it is a very it is a consistent way of describing the power progression in the story um 
it just wasn't, didn't really hit that scratch that letter pretty divine for me. So for me, again, it gets a score of six out of 10, which is not again, out necessarily a bad score. It's just, it's not boring, which is what a five out of 10 is. Um, I didn't hate it, which is, or didn't dislike it, which is what a four to 10 is. It's just, it wasn't good for me in particular. And I, for the reasons that I say it. So it gets a score of six out of 10. That's Beastmaster Symbiosis, a harem lit RPG science fantasy adventure Beastmasters book number one with a score of six out of 10. There you go. Okay, next one. It is Infinite Lives, Infinite Lives Online, book number one, written by Elvin Steele. Okay, it is 295 pages. It is a full novel. It is $3.99. It is available on Kindle Unlimited. And here is the author's description. And it's a long one. Winter is coming, is it? Well, if my shriveled up little energy bar is anything to go by, I'd argue that it is already f f in here. Trust me, the Infinite Lives hack seemed like a good idea at the time. Welcome to Infinitus, an exciting new MMORPG where you can make friends and mutilate people without the complications that often arise from the latter. If you have fancy, if you fancy having your digitized soul stuffed into a wizard, an elf, or one of the or one of the any number of fantasy bodies, then this is. Tr- <laughs> and this is the fully immersive gaming experience for you. Magic, melee, and if you play your cards right, adventure on adventure action await. Or at least that's what the Sons of Glitches on the commercial promised me. What I got was the Lord of the Rings on bloody amphetamines, a glitching garbage fire of a game. As I write this, I'm trapped in a red zone with a horde of unstoppable murder fiends, a clingy nemesis, and a pack of players who couldn't give two tugs of a Donkey Kong's you-know-what whether I live or die. The wrong end of my flaming sword keeps catching fire. The only NPCs who want to have sex with me are the members of the gnome community, and to make matters worse, I can't log out. Um, I did mention the tank full of heavily armed soldiers and mech suits who just arrived, right? I am so screwed. And so there we go. And so there's a long little warning section about supposed to be comedic warnings. Okay. Um, and so it says more swearing than Ready Player One, less words than Lord of the Rings. And so even from the novel description, you can tell that there's um, <laughs> there's definitely a huge attempt at humor here. Um, this is a story that again is first that's filled with cursing, bravado, pop culture, geek or game jokes, parody, and satire are really big parts of the story. Um, and I think the thing that's going to make this enjoyable for a reader or not is essentially whether the humor lands. The humor landing is going to be the determining factor. Like if you like the novel description, if you thought it was funny, you're probably going to like the rest of the story because that's essentially what it is. It's a bunch of jokes, a bunch of humor, humor situations, um, you know, and a bunch of like descriptions and commentary and, and, and jokes all, all, all mixed together. Um, and if the humor doesn't land for you, um, if you read the description and that just wasn't funny for you for any reason, then you're not going to like the story either. It's not going to really work for you because then that's what this story is. It's a, it's, it's a big, long gag of story. Um, and for example, um, in the first 20 verse of the novel, the main character does three things and like literally in the first 20 percent this is all he does he he talks to a zombie he kills a goblin and he gets into a bar that's it that's all he does in the first 20 percent of the novel um there are other like i mean there were things that happened there are, there are points of view shown instead of for a lot of jokes but in that space of time in that in that what is it um 60 pages essentially um the main character talks a lot he makes a lot of jokes he does a lot of monologuing um, it looks like self-talk, um, or, you know, and, and, and there's, there's plenty of like little situational humor things, but that's, that's all that really happens in the story. Like really, that's all it is. Um, and, and that's what the story is. It's, it's a lot of humor mixed with the hawker situations, subplots about like rogue AI hacking, gaming gone wrong and minor amounts of fighting, all that exists in the story, but it's all set up for more jokes and more humor. Um, so, and, and while personally, I appreciated some of the jokes, I thought I, I kind of got that they were jokes. Um, and there were some really, I'm like, I gotta say some of the setups at the beginning for some of the jokes at the end, like, I'm like, wow, that was a long play for that joke, man. Um, the humor in general just didn't land for me. And that's just kind of the case with humor in general, like any kind of story where I think is that is humor based, whether it's critical failures or, um, a lot of like Harmon Cooper stuff. Um, the, the, the thing that's going to make it enjoyable for a reader or not is that whether you get the author's sense of humor, whether his humor or his, her new humor matches your own, whether it resonates you in that respect. And this is one of those cases. In this case, though, the, st- the humor didn't resonate. I didn't, 
I didn't laugh. I might've like, Oh, I'm like, I thought, Oh, that's a, that's a smart joke. Um, but it never made me laugh out loud. Like some of these other stories I mentioned did. Um, and if, if that's the case with you, you're not going to like this, but I say, check out the sample. I think this is one of the cases like, Oh, this is a really good fun story for people who get the sense of humor, who appreciate the, the, the style of humor that's in this novel. If you like it, if you like the sense of humor, you're probably really going to enjoy the story. I just, it just the humor just didn't land me so a lot of the jokes just missed and beyond those jokes along along this up you know there are some things that happen here but it, it's all for that sake of sense of humor so for me the especially the beginning part was kind of boring because that's all it really it's a lot of talking a lot of jokes a lot of things like that thankfully in the mid to end story um the novel shifts focus a little bit and the pacing picks up and some story element other story elements start to play out uh, besides the main character talk, but even then it's, it's still a lot of talking. It's a lot of like monologuing descriptions and dialogue, um, and like situational humor kind of stuff. So, um, I could not badly written. Um, if the humor lands for you again, you're, 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 you'll probably like this. It just didn't land for me. So I get to score a six out of 10. That's infinite live, infinite lives online book. Number one with a score is six out of 10. There we go. I don't think I'll read book two either. Even though book one is on the upcoming list, I'm probably not going to read it. Um, but if you like this novel, it's there for you, folks. Okay, one more, folks. One more, folks. It's going to be New Life, a lit RPD adventure written by H.P. Mallory. Okay, it is 274 pages, $2.99. It is available in Kindle Limited. Here's the author's description. As the top detective in her small Alaskan town, Claire Darrow has seen her fair share of cases. But when a distraught widow comes to Claire with the suspicious details of her husband's death, Claire is forced into new territory, virtual reality gaming territory. Following the trail set for her by billionaire playboy Seth Channing, the owner of New Life, an exclusive VR gaming company, Claire goes on the adventure of a lifetime into the Viking world of Valhalla. Caught up in a web of secrets, lies, attraction, and skeletons from her own closet, Claire heads into a world she never knew existed. Braving treacherous quests, handsome kings, and dangerous computer-generated characters is only half the battle as she sets out to collect details of the case to decipher whether new life is really behind not one, but three murders. While Claire uncovers more and more layers of the mystery, she begins to wonder if she's actually playing a game or if she's the one being played. Okay, this is a very short review. This is not Little RPG. It's really simple. Um, the story starts out with the main character, Claire, detective missing some deaths of Swede, Swede with playing a video game, a VR game. She goes into the game, which doesn't make sense at all because those those deaths didn't happen there. Um, the weren't even caused by the game. So again, that aspect is flawed. Uh, but she goes into the game, experiences like a fantasy action. She flirts with some, some strong warriors, and then she basically leaves. The entire detective aspect of the story is not advanced at all in this novel. Um, and there, while there are a handful of like notifications in the story, they don't mean anything to the actual writing and storytelling. Um, they don't have any impact on the story. There's no RPG progression. Um, and, and I'll be full disclosure. The, there are words like, Oh, she has a character sheet with like her name and she chooses a class and she's level one, but that doesn't change. She doesn't ever progress past that point. There is no actual RPG progression. And even though she, there are some experience notifications there, again, they don't really mean anything. They don't actually make sense in math terms. Um, and again, these notifications exist in the story. Um, but they, f- they feel like they were inserted after the story was already written. Cause there are, there are other types of notifications or brother brain information like, Oh, an item description or, or like a description of a monster. And there, but it's, it's very much like, Oh, the story is written. And again, this is, this is purely conjecture in that this is what I think happened uh, for some of these notifications. Uh, like the story is written. And then like someone went back and said, Oh, this is an item they describe. Oh, this is an item that she's shown, but it's inserted an, an item description here. Um, and the way you can kind of tell when that says, when you look at the, uh, the description, before and after it if nothing is really acknowledging the actual text it's probably inserted after the story was already written because otherwise the 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 text after would at least acknowledge what that thing said and that's never happened in the story um so it's it's just one of those things that i this is again this is pure conjecture and maybe it's a bias on my own part but this author um, has a whole slew of like romance um, paranormal romance kind of stories. And that's essentially what this turns out to be. It, it feels like a romance story set in virtuality. 
um, and not lit RPG. And it kind of fits in what the author has done in the past. She, she, she's written a bunch of um, super paranormal romance stories, and she has a really nice following. And all the other reviews on this story basically say, "Oh, this is this is another great thing from from the author. She you know sent me a, a, a novel in exchange for an honest review, and I like the romance stuff, and I like the the fact that it's in virtuality. It was a surprise setting for the story, and none of them ever mentioned anything about." you know the rpg mechanics because they don't really exist in the story um so this is definitely a case of to me at least a a, a, a paranormal romance author trying to test the waters and and get trendy with the little rpg stuff which is uh personally just annoying but more to the point this isn't little rpg it gets a score six, uh, four to ten it's just not little rpg at most it's a romance story set in virtual reality which is perfectly fine it's just not little rpg so there you go that's new life a little rpg adventure not actually a little bit uh, getting a score four out of 10. So there you go. I actually dislike that part. And that's it. That's the show. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for listening, for watching, for hanging out with me. Um, remember you can follow us on Facebook, on Twitter, on YouTube, on Patreon, on our website, um, all kinds of places to follow the show and, and get the latest and greatest episodes. Or just, we have a whole like database of like little review reviews and, and scores and, and, and ways for you to find some really amazing stories. Um, if you enjoy the podcast, and want to support us in any way, shape or form, you can find all the ways to do so at litrpgpodcast.com slash support. And again, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for hanging out with me. Thank you for taking the time to to listen to me gab about this thing that I love and I'm passionate about lit RPG. Um, and until we can hang out again, folks, remember to go read some lit RPG. Goodbye, everybody. <laughs>